Hello, there's somebody joining. Oh, that's probably you or me. That's probably not really somebody. When we know better. Yeah, we do better. Okay. Right, How much of a little it is? Yeah, it's a big delay. Tayjah. Hey, hey, girl. All right. We are. Hey, Tayjah. Hey, <laughs> so today we're talking about some good stuff, girl. We are live in less than a minute. As you all join, hello. Oh, just Ta hi, Tayon. It's not just Tayon. <laughs> Tayon, share it on your Facebook. Yeah, girl. Hey, you all that just joined, we see you. We're joining in a few seconds. I mean, we're about to get it cracking in a few seconds. Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. Y'all like our new spot? <laughs> <laughs> We do. Yeah, y'all see the new digs? It looks nice in here. Wonder what else to do with my couch. <laughs> It'll show from there. All right, we can love. My dad always called me Bucky Beaver. Because if I tease, that's bad. Are you looking at your teeth? I gotta make sure. That you see the Thank bottom you guys for joining us today. <laughs> make sure you see the bottom of this. <laughs> All right, let's go. It's three o'clock. Happy Sunday. Hey, hey. So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this live edition of Let's Unpack. I'm just Tom, <laughs> I am Tom White, creator and host. And I'm your co-host, Nita Renee. Um, Jatan is with the Dealer of Hope. Dealer of Hope is our uh, Let's Unpack new Facebook page. Um, and Dealer of Hope is our, at Dealer of Hope at Gmail. You can reach us via email as well. Yes, and I am with Successful Connections. I am a CEO, and I'm also the Executive Director of Project Diva, which is a personal development and mentoring um, coaching organization for Black girls here in the Twin Cities. So thanks again for joining us. As usual, we are um, we're hitting on some topics that are meaningful to us. Um, Jatan is the brainchild behind this show. And just I want you to let the audience know a little bit why we do why we do let's unpack. That's uh, that's an interesting question because we were just talking about it actually. And so the whole the whole purpose behind let's unpack, which is a born from my shower in my brain, um, is so that we can have conversations that are therapeutic and healing in nature. Some controversial, the topics that we find our, our community are talking about and our friends are talking about, or which I was talking about at work, but it's to get those conversations going. And then hopefully as you view them, whether it's in real time or later, you're continuing those discussions in your home and that's where healing actually begins. Right, right. And that's a lot of times we don't get that, right? A lot of times um, we spend our wheels circling or we spend our wheels churning, trying to figure stuff out alone. And me and Jatan are here to basically say, you're not by yourself. Like a lot of the girls and the families that I deal with in Project Diva and then a lot of my clients, we're all dealing with the same stuff. So. Why not make it to where it is something that we, we can create as a, a true discussion with family and friends that may not be near us or may not know us. Um, and just to be able to have some real conversations. So today's show is about mental fitness. It's about when we know better, we do better. Jatan, we had a conversation earlier this week. She called me pissed off. <laughs> like, no, we're talking about this this week. And we're not having any guests because we need to have some real conversation just around when we know better, we do better. 
And I think our grandmas used to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know, they used to tell us you're supposed to know better. So you're supposed <laughs> to do better. But if you're not taught better or you're not shown better, then right. you, know, you can do better. So, yeah. So when you when you called me, what was on your mind? Oh, my God. So we're going to go through a few topics today, you guys. Um, one of them, which is going to be, I may rant a little bit, is our social wellness. That's what I was ranting about. Um, lots of stuff going on in our social spaces, um, whether they be at work, uh, whether they be at the local restaurant, and especially on our internet social spaces. Thanks. And so I want to talk about that. And I want to talk about how um, how that's impacting and sitting on us and how mm-hmm. when we how our response to it may have an impact on someone yes. else as well. Yeah. And we need to be mindful of the impact both ways. So right now like it's not that. a not a healthy space for us. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a struggle. I know there's been a couple of topics. I don't watch the news that much. So um, a lot of times I get my information from Facebook. If I hop on and I go to, to market something for one of the businesses, um, I see what's going on in the news. And so um, it was, I, I know one of the heavier things is the young lady that's passed um, who was potentially or quote unquote left by herself. Right. Um, and then there's just, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff that we're dealing with that a lot of times I think we put more emphasis on it than, than is needed. Yeah. And we don't think sometimes before we yeah. respond yeah. on our social media space or in our social media spaces. So yes, we'll talk about that a little bit. And let's just dive into some of the stuff. Right. Let's just let's go so, for it. So it's um, being mentally fit. Um, when we know better, we do better. So being mentally fit will help you um, help you do better, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to touch. We what is being mentally fit? Me mentally fit is being able to be in a strange or awkward, challenging space uh, mm-hmm. and being able to navigate it without being dysregulated in a way that you lash out, uh, you put your hands on anyone, you appear to be physically disrupted in nature. You're mentally fit. You look gathered. You are gathered. You don't just look the part. Mm-hmm. You are gathered. And when you walk away, you know you're gathered. So right. I gave an example um, to the girls recently at the Project Diva <laughs> yes. where uh, I had a challenging moment as an adult and how I felt so empowered when I left that space. Cause I left regulated. And uh, the, some of the thoughts that I had to go through <laughs> in my head could have led me down a whole nother path. Right. And I love who I am and what I do, and that's not the path I want to travel. So it, you have to be mentally fit. So. Right. So when we think about mentally fit and how do you become mentally fit? Mm-hmm. So if we dive a little bit deeper, so an incident happens to you. You're at work. You're on the. You're you're doing some business throughout the day, and some shit just throw you off guard, like somebody come at you sideways, right? And in that moment, just like our kids, like you were saying, you're telling the girls, like at that moment, you have choices, mm-hmm. right? You have choices to either react, react irrationally, or take a minute to breathe and respond in a way that you're gonna be, you're gonna be pleased with how you walk away from it. Right. And it's always in that decisive moment that that, like Jatan said, it could either take you down one path yeah. or it could take you down another. And so when you're mentally fit, you have actually taken the time to, to think about how you respond to anything mm-hmm. in life. Right. That's one of the things that we're teaching the girls in Project Diva. Right. Jatan was our motivational speaker for our first month here in September. And we did we had Jatan come in because it's the start of the school year. And wanting the girls to understand that at the at the end of the day, you got a choice. You have right a choice. Right now, not to say that there's not some mental things going on with a lot of us, not to say that um, mistakes won't happen, but at the end of the day, understanding first and foremost that you do have a choice right. is always the key yeah. to and mental fitness. Power in that choice. Mm-hmm. Um, and to when you when you when you make it through a challenge or uh, my, my grandmother, my Medea, and I used to call them a trial. <laughs> uh, there's something at the end of that that feels so good, right? They talk about how when you get to the end of that trial and the Lord <laughs> stirs you up, it's the same stirring. It's the same trial. You're just not in church. You're not in church. So, yeah. You get the same feeling. Yeah. So we have social wellness. When we think about having those or making those decisions in our social arenas, mm-hmm. uh, we have it involves building healthy, nurturing, and supportive relationships as well as fostering a genuine connection with those around you. Yes. Um, so when you think about like being mental fit in your social areas mm-hmm. or being having social wellness, mm-hmm. um, some of the things that can lead you to that, um, Jatan, you want to yeah. go into? Um, my first one's going to be close your laptop. Close your laptop, put your phone down, put your, uh, your, your, your whatever, your iPad or your Google, whatever, mm-hmm. but just log off. 
uh, back away. Check out. Check out. <laughs> mentally, ch mentally check out from the social spaces. Don't mm -hmm. mentally check out. But leave those spaces alone. And then get outside. Man, mm -hmm. I go to Butler Garden. Uh, mm -hmm. Gardens uh, in Minneapolis, and it is an amazing space. And all you can hear is nature. There aren't any loud conversations. Mm -hmm. And people are generally not even talking. But uh, you can hear hummingbirds. And you can see butterflies and just enjoy those moments of fresh, clean air and whatever thoughts are in the moment and not being judgmental and, mm -hmm. and, and being kind with yourself. And that's a good time to affirm yourself, too, when you're out yes. in nature and alone. Rowing um, is a good place to spend some time with yourself. Yeah. Baby. Yeah. 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 So nature is known as our natural balancer. Mm -hmm. So a lot of a lot of psychologists and a lot of um, natural um, healers. That's the first thing that they, one of the first things that they tell you to do is when you are experiencing anxiety or just thrown off of your, your kilter, get out in nature, take a walk, right? Yes. And so in doing that, you do allow for yourself to shut off from the world because a lot of times what we're not doing as adults is stopping all the noise. Like there used to be a time when we were kids before all of the social stuff and the, all the technology where we literally did play outside or go outside right. as a natural thing right. because we didn't want to sit in the house all day, right? And so getting back to that, like there's a real thing in going back to nature. So like the girls on my row team, um, we're dealing with some mental health issues on our row teams with our kids. And when I say that once we are out on the water, mm -hmm. like everything mm -hmm. is left back on land mm -hmm. because no matter what's going on with you before you get out there, it's just you in the water. Right, and we're in a rowboat, so we have to balance. <laughs> and so everybody better be on point, right? Everybody <laughs> on the road team better be mentally fit. <laughs> or we get there once we get out there, there. Right. right? So yes, rowing, any sport outside, or just like you said, just simply stepping outside mm -hmm. and breathing the fresh air, yeah. right? Yeah. If you're at work, yes, it might be challenging for you to do that, but taking your lunch outside versus yeah. inside, like getting out there to breathe yeah. and think your does. thoughts through. That's something that we don't do. So take the time to do it. That yeah. helps you become mentally fit. Absolutely. Um, another one I like is join an organization or some type of group mm -hmm. um, that's is following something that you're passionate about yeah. and let that kind of fuel you. Um, that can be self-care also, right? Because you're there with other people who are thinking and dreaming like you and kind of keep you level-headed and, 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 and push you when you need to be pushed. So I encourage that. And then call family and friends. Instead of texting our family and friends, why don't we call them? Girl. Don't even FaceTime them. Call them. Call them. Or roll up on them. Hey, you know, I didn't even want to call you today. I just want yeah. to let you see my face and I see yours. So there's we, something to be said yeah. about human interaction. Yeah. See, we're old <laughs> enough to remember. We remember, I remember my first cell phone, but I remember not having a cell phone also. And so we had the right? <laughs> and the two way, and the three way, way call. <laughs> Um, but we were so much more sociable and our, and I don't have a massive vocabulary by any means, but mm -hmm. our vocabulary is, is different than those that are, have grown up now unless they've purposely done something right. because we had to read books to be engaged and talk to people yes. to be engaged. My mother used yes. to make us learn words from the dictionary yep. um, and things of that nature and have a conversation because you used to say, uh, you got to be able to talk to any and everybody, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. So you got to be social. Um, so we got to get outside and we got to get healthy with our social life. In with that, since we're on social, mm -hmm. let's talk about how we use our, our Facebook and our Twitter talk and about. our, oh my God, whatever, whatever, Instagram and Snapchats. And I don't even know them all. It's too many. Um, we have to be more mindful. We have to be more mindful, not, not only of ourself, right? Because we, in certain cases, I can't watch videos. Um, if there's a kid in the video, um, because hurt kids are a trigger for me. I was a hurt kid. And mm -hmm. so I can't really watch those kinds of videos. Mm -hmm. And so I have to be mindful of that. And also me being mindful, even if I could find a way to stomach it, there's somebody like me. So I need to think before yeah. I share it. And then maybe if I want to share, maybe I can find just a group of folks that I can share that with so we can conversate about mm, it. That's good. And then most important, when there's somebody or something going on in the video, there's family members attached to that. Hell yeah. I was recently at DC and went to the uh, the uh, African American History Museum. Yeah. And there is a, a, a Emmett Till uh, space. That was and the only space that um, I broke down crying it's in. It's incredible. I promise you that. That's it's the incredible. only space I but broke down But you know what you can't do in there? You can't videotape. No. You can't take any pictures once you're inside the exhibit. And that's so that his parents and his family, or his, right. his parents are there, excuse me for that. His family doesn't have to relive some of those things that you haven't seen yet because now you're going to see them when you're going. When you're going, ooh, when you're going they don't want to re-see the original casket that he was born in. Mm. 
they've already seen it, right. right? They've lived that experience. So we just need to be mindful in those spaces of ourselves, of others, and then be mindful that we're seeking employment uh, or we're trying to be business owners so or we're trying to show ourselves to be proven in some kind of way. And people, I'm here to tell you for fact that people, not only your current employer is researching your Facebook and your Instagram and your whatever and your whatever, but uh, future employers, you want a grant opportunity, the grant post. The pe- I just applied for the Bush Foundation. We both did. High five. Hey, hey. The Bush Foundation, you know what they're <laughs> going to do probably? They're going to check our Facebook because they asked us for those extensions. So you have to be mindful um, and in, mindful in a healthy way. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of that stuff's just not unhealthy, and then we take it all on, and now everybody's a private yeah. investigator on mm-hmm. Facebook. And so I've been, I've been relatively quiet because I wasn't there. Right. I don't know any facts. I don't even know this young lady, but what I do know is I have a daughter, and I'm a mother. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be very mindful of that mother's view. Oh yeah. So I mean, you know, it, it's funny that you said that. I was, I watched um, some Chris Saka videos this morning. He's a billionaire um, venture capitalist, and one of the things that he said is that you know when he gets information about investing or someone's asking that's the first place he goes is like to all the social media so he can see what type of character people yeah. have and one of the conversations we had with the girls because they they have issues being the that generation right mm-hmm. or this generation that is dealing with a lot of social media stuff they're like but why can't i just be myself on facebook or it's my facebook mm-hmm. like okay but really like think about it you know, like take a minute to think yeah about what do you want i'm in control of the perception of me I am personal. Nobody branding. else. Yeah, nobody personal else branding. is not even my mother. Mm-hmm. My mother used to tell me when you leave here, you're a reflection of me. I'm really not. What she was saying was you better act right. <laughs> right? That's what she's saying. You better show that I've given you some tools. Exactly. Right. I am I am I set the precedent with precedent of what you're gonna think of me. Exactly. And so I'm going to be strategic about what I put out there because I want to control the footprint of my data. And that's all I'm asking. Y'all heard that right. Footprint, footprint of your data. Control the footprint of your data. If you don't, mm-hmm. Google and Facebook and Instagram and the federal government and Sprint. That's who I got. Comcast. And everybody. <laughs> everybody else will. And they will form a, formulate a story about you that may not be true. Yeah. So you have to be mindful. Um, I, there's real. some friends that I won't allow to post on my page. I love you, but some of the stuff you post on your page. Yep, that imprint. Yeah, I don't want she to. So I don't let you. I, I block you in a certain space where you cannot post on my page. It makes sense. We yeah. have to be protective of that. Yeah. Like, for one, we're business owners. Yeah. And for two, we deal with kids. Yeah. And I don't know, like, yeah. as a generation, I think our generation of people have not been that very mindful. I don't know if that's a phrase or work that very, but it works. So mindful of the next generation yeah. of babies. We like, we, it. like, they are watching that's their whole job is to watch us absolutely right and if we're not being mindful of that y'all don't bullshit that's bottom line yeah. otherwise y'all don't care about the kids yeah. so yeah my grandmother used to say um my grandmother from my chicago grandmother so we call her, um my grand used to say i paid a cost to be the boss and that said a few things just one we didn't run shit <laughs> <laughs> we didn't run nothing but our mouth um the second thing it was watch me show you how to be an adult mm. Exactly. And she was and she was grown. She was grown. She she handled her business. So I have to say that about my grandparents too. So So, yes, let's be mindful and be safe with our social presence. 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 I want to take a turn. Go ahead. Go for it. Let's rock that financial wellness. So we just talked about social wellness. Right? Yes. Because a lot of the personal branding affects our financial wellness also. Come on now. I just talked about people looking you up when you want a job or colleges do this. Come on. So the definition for us. For financial wellness is an intricate balance of the mental, spiritual, mm-hmm. and physical aspects of money. Financial wellness is having an understanding of your financial situation and taking care of it in such a way that you are prepared for financial changes, mm-hmm. right? So one of the things that, that Jatan and I were talking about earlier was, do we know our bottom, like, do we know our bottom number? Do we know that number that we have to have each month in order to live comfortably? Right. And so I think we mm-hmm. both agree that we know it, but we don't like to always look at it uh, because then as we, because of how we were raised, it was more so if we look at it, then we know it. Then it's like, shit, oh, I ain't got to do this. <laughs> do this. Gotta do the lunch count. <laughs> right. Yeah. So instead, we want to we're in the space where we are now putting it, putting everything together to where we know what the, that number is. Yeah. 
and we're actually looking for ways to create income to make sure that it's covered and then the access as well is is brought in right, right. so understanding what streams of revenue we actually currently have and which ones are we able to create yeah. to be able to then live in the financial abundance right Right. Absolutely. We didn't, we're not just waiting for God and praying that he no. sends a blessing. You got to do some work. <laughs> There's so some work that go along with that. Tell, right? You got to do some work. <laughs> and so one of the things that, that I'm excited to do with the Girls in Project Eva is teach them just a personal balance sheet and profit and loss statement. So as the girls mm. are growing into getting their jobs, they're understanding that out the gate because that's the number one thing that we did not get growing yeah. up. Yeah. Like, if, how do we how do we not know what our assets and our liabilities are? Yeah. Like, that's general math. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And then how are we balancing it? Yeah. Are we spending more than we're than we're? We should and we should run our homes like a corporation. We can, that's what Absolutely. the wealthy do. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So huh. financial wellness is key in, to in, to any of our survival. Or if we really bought that business and we're talking about we really want to get out of debt. Like Chris Saka was saying this morning, like the best feeling in the world is when you go from debt to zero, not mm -hmm. owing nobody. The sky is the limit at that point. But how do you get from debt to zero if you don't know the damn numbers? Well, you got to stop being scared of the numbers. We scared that, like I said, I, was some, I used to be scared to open the light bill. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, the light bill is here. Uh, lay it down, walk around before we leave. I still got to pay it. It's not even it's open. Not, it's not even open. Like, we can't be scared of any numbers. No numbers. No. I'm actually, I was sharing with Nita that tomorrow I'm going to sit with a young lady and we're going to unpack all my numbers. I know. And I'm just going to be honest with everybody. That's scary. Mm -hmm. But it's scary good for me because my, my family is high time. We are moving in a different direction. I know. And for us to do that, I can't be scared of the numbers. And we're making the money to be able to do it, which right. is super comfortable. Right. Like at this point, it's like, okay, at least when I do it, I'm going to be able to do something yeah, about it. Yeah, I can do something about <laughs> it. And see, and, and not to not have that fear. Mm hmm. I'll take all other fears because I've been there. Yo, know, rent's due, light bill, I want to move, the car need a tire, and there's nothing I can do about any of that. That's a sick fearful fear. So then how do you go from that to zero? First of all, you gotta stop being scared of your numbers. So I had to stop being scared of my light bill, the the, the rent man, right? I don't I don't duck and dodge my rent man. I'm looking for him. Dude. <laughs> exactly. How come you ain't cash that money or the what's up? You know, yeah. um, so you got to get to that point first. You prioritize, which is somewhere in here. Oh, in here, prioritize, prioritize your priorities. Yeah. Somewhere I had to change my priorities from being, I want to drive this fancy car with these fancy rims um, to, I want to be. Is that the home. Omaha in you? Yeah. Okay. You know what it is. <laughs> got to get there. We was on days when we was kids, y'all. We was on days. <laughs> Omaha, the rest of the O and E. My priorities had to shift. My mindset had to change in order for my priorities to shift mm -hmm. because the money couldn't come. Mm -hmm. my, my mindset was blocking the money to mm -hmm. be able to change the priorities from being silly little things that held no real value in my life. Right. When I, if I died 10, 15 years ago, I had nothing to leave my Maybe kids. the time I'm going to be like, what the fuck? Right. Why did I start over? <laughs> so I, I, I can't be scared. I got to prioritize my priorities and then explore every legal financial option that's presented to me. That doesn't mean I have to take them all. But I should absolutely explore. Definitely. So like what that looks like for me being a business owner, um, I was sharing with you time earlier. It's like when I think of streams of revenue, I'm like, OK, so um, I'm full time in my nonprofit. So that's, you know, building the the funding development team to be able to bring in the funds for a salary for myself, as well as other people that are coming on board. But then also in my for profit successful connections, it's okay being mindful of what i'm bringing in from my book mm -hmm. that's one stream being mindful of how much my workshops are that's another stream mm -hmm. and then the motivational speaking that's another stream right. but being financially savvy and being able to sit down the person that i sit down with is isaiah goodman of becoming and say it again, say it again. isaiah goodman of becoming <laughs> he is a phenomenal financial planner and the way he breaks it down into layman's terms is one that I've never, ever experienced before. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to continue working with him to get my stuff in order yeah. so that as these things are opening up for me, yeah. that it makes sense. And I'm not worried about the debt or the taxes yeah. or oh my God, you know, the taxes. all that's the insurance. Right. You know, so but it takes for like you said, it takes for us to stop our worlds, cut off the damn Facebook Man. and all the other the other oh. stuff that's distracting us yeah. from actually getting our stuff in order to be able to be an example for the next generation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it doesn't mean that we have to stop having fun. 
No. That doesn't mean the Friday no. night happy hours have to stop. No. Or the cocktails over your Absolutely. home girl house. That's that's part of your social that's, that's part of your social self care. And the celebration. And you gotta celebrate. You gotta celebrate. All victories are to be celebrated. So mm-hmm. no, I was gonna say made it through the work week and you didn't snap on nobody. <laughs> celebrate. <laughs> so under the financial wellness suggestions, we had stop being afraid of your numbers, right? Stop being afraid. I'm sorry, get an expert on your team to help facilitate a plan. Jatan's heading there this week. I'm meeting with mine again. Um, prioritize your priorities financially and explore legal financial wealth building opportunities. Another plug we have to give is to the Black Women's Wealth Alliance. Oh, oh my yes. God, Kenya McKnight. Yes. Girl, I Listen. love you. Yes. yes. So we're having the opportunity to start an asset club. And so that's me, Jatan, and Michelle. We have our asset club um, starting. We have a room for a few more women, but we're going to be, be able to create a financial hub for what we want to do yes. along with having a financial hub from the Black Women's Wealth Alliance to be able to be a part of, to have as a support system. So if you guys have not been on the Black Women's Wealth Alliance website, it's black, bwwa.com. And if you need to reach out, you can reach out to Kenya McKnight. So, I mean, and for us, the, it's the historical Black women, um, the women who are descendants of slaves, who have been here for hundreds of years. It's a space that we actually can go into and actually feel comfortable being us and learning about financials, right on. which is we're worthy of that. Right. So I'm excited for that. And it's a, I don't want, before we move on, mm-hmm. be, be, having that kind of space takes away that fear we were talking about earlier, right? Because you're in a room um, where it's almost like you're with your, with your parents or your family, mm-hmm. which is a comfortable space to talk about your money. Yeah. So when the guards come down, right? When somebody, and this is no pun to my, my Caucasian friends, I know I love y'all, but when the person across mm-hmm. the table from me is Caucasian talking about my money, I close up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And it takes me a few more minutes than if that person looked like me. And for whatever reason, that's a right of reason, that's a whole nother show, we're not gonna unpack that today, but <laughs> being in that space and feeling safe enough to talk about, oh my God, listen, my debt to income, honey. No, not looking at it, right? So I'm with you. Yeah. I want to jump into spiritual wellness. Let's go. Okay. And this isn't churchy spiritual wellness, y'all. I mean spiritual wellness. Um, and the definitions that definition that we have is an ability to ex- experience and integrate and integrate a meaning of purpose into your life uh, through a person's connectedness with self, others, art, music, literature, nature. Mm-hmm. Or a power of or a power greater than oneself. Now y'all know I'm here for all of this. <laughs> all of this. There are um, they like to say there are seven, I believe, mm-hmm. of these uh, uh, spiritual wellness. Um, and I have a link that we will share with you guys later, so you can look that up and uh, and kind of check out those seven steps. But I'm going to give um, kind of where I am with that, mm-hmm. and then we can jump into um, some suggestions that we had. And yes. so. Um, it, I remember my uh, spirit awakening, and that's exactly what it felt like. It felt like an awakening, and it didn't happen at church. Um, and there's nothing wrong with church. I grew up in church, um, and, I, and, I, and I believe in praising the Lord. Um, but I didn't need to be in church to have that, as Oprah calls it, a aha for me in my life. Mm-hmm. What I needed to be was in front of the person I was in front of that day that was given that word in that moment, and all they were giving me was a tool for empowerment. Mm-hmm. And once I heard that I actually, that it was my birthright mm-hmm. to be the greatest me that I could possibly be, mm-hmm. I was like, and then, and not feel selfish about loving me the way that I do, mm-hmm. baby, I was on fire. <laughs> I was like, yes, I really can be anything I want to be. And I remember that day riding home, my first day of the first <laughs> power class, and I listened to Nas. I know I can be what I want to be. And, and, yes. and as a kid, when I heard that song, it didn't register. That day it registered and my whole life has changed since then. Mm-hmm. And so meditation is a big deal um, in your spiritual wellness. You have to, Russell Simmons, who I stalk the way we stalk Abraham <laughs> uh, Hicks. Um, you know, I started following him like two, three years ago. And he, he, in a minimum, he and all other experts in meditation say, you have to give yourself 20 to 30 minutes a day. You should give yourself more. Mm-hmm. But no matter what, in that 20 to 30 minutes can look like anything. It could be journaling, reading, it could be walking, it could be singing, it could be driving. Some people run. You've got to find that space to meditate. I actually promote just sitting still. Mm-hmm. Just listen and listen for the universe to give you your next direction. Um, listen for uh, your word for yourself. Listen to how you encourage, listen to how you talk into yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, be mindful and, and learning how to get mentally fit is one of when you're in those quiet spaces, learning to not judge those thoughts. Just let them come, and go. come and go. Just right. let them come and go. 
know. Their thoughts. We get so stressed that we got all these extra wrinkles and our head hurt because we want to think about every thought. My God, who has that kind of time? That's how you get all these gray hairs, trying to think about every thought. I haven't got any new gray hairs since I stopped that. I know, that's right. So um, meditate and however that looks for you. Um, get outside. Um, we talked about that earlier. Um, think about positive thoughts and get rid of anything negative. Negative people, negative thoughts, negative paraphernalia around your house, get more, ne- put more in, pour, put more positive in and get the negative out. And lastly, explore your spiritual core. Know your core for yourself. Not what the preacher said, not what the evangelist said, not what your mama said, not what Medea said, not what Uncle Tommy said, your spiritual core for yourself. And that's how you will be spiritually well, in my opinion. Now there is much more to this. Uh, <laughs> my mother would say, and you need to go to church. Uh, and, 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 and for some people, yes, that's you can. Preference. Absolutely. Uh, like that's I said, preference. I grew up in church. I have no problem with the church. I have friends in a variety of background, um, and so I respect all religions. Um, but all I'm saying is spiritual and religion are separate. And today we're only talking about your spiritual wellness. Right. I, and I, I, you put that so eloquently because meditating every day, I've done it for the last three weeks solid. Mm-hmm. I've done it over my lifetime on a regular basis, but the last three weeks solid and my days have gone so mm-hmm. much more smoother, but I've also committed to me. It's all about the self-discovery, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Because like you said, like we all were born and we were giving tools on what our parents and our grandparents and our aunts and uncles all felt that all felt was the route to take, right? right? It's the general route to take, but none of them have ever None of them are able to ever say that this is the route for you because we're all born of our own journey. So nobody can tell you. You have the right, it is your birthright to self-discover what works for you. And so in meditating, that has worked for me because that gives me time to, first of all, sit with myself. A lot of us don't like to to sit with ourselves, right? Because when we sit with ourselves, Mm. we got to be 100 with ourselves. Mm. And we don't like being 100 with ourselves. (laughs) Our emotions is our natural guidance, our natural guidance system, our emotions. And so when you done, when you done fucked up and you done went, went ham on somebody and you got to sit with that and have to choose to apologize or make that situation right, that's what we don't like to do. Right. But what we don't also like to do is we don't like to make decisions on our own because then we have to be accountable for those decisions. Right on. Be accountable for your decisions. Your life will be so much more peaceful. And if you can sit with yourself sometime throughout the day, mine is in the morning, before my day gets started, before I get the emails, before I get the phone calls, that's going to try to throw me off my game, right? Off my square. Mm-hmm. I don't already said it ain't going to throw me off my square. So by the time it hits me, it's like, okay, it's not even an issue. It's a challenge for me to try to figure out how do I get through it right. versus that was some fucked up shit. Right. Right. Yeah. And I'm able to stop in those moments like yeah. you did last week and say, you know what? It's not on me. That's that's all about you, baby. So, you know what? Right. When you get a chance, let's talk about that a little later. Right. Or let me come back around to you when you feel a little bit better about right. yourself, because right. I'm good. Right. 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 But we got to be able to sit with ourselves. And meditation is one of those big, big things. And exploring spiritual core is the key to that. Mm-hmm. You have to stop. Yeah. And also explore, to what works explore a deeper meaning of things. Stop letting things just be on the surface. the surface. And stop letting people, if you ask a question, stop letting people give you a surface answer. And, and, and that can go across relationships. Um, go deeper to find a deeper meaning of those things that are that are strategically for you. That you don't have to be yes. going deep for everybody. Go deep for you. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, we're at 3.30. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, so before, okay, so, so hopefully this has been really good for everybody. Um, we have a couple more things, but before we do, we want to make sure we thank our sponsors, yes. um, CA Stalling, uh, CAS Digital Marketing, um, Boulder Options, which is where we are hosted out of, um, Project Diva, my nonprofit organization, as well as Successful Connections, my for-profit, H. White's Men's Room um, with the Black Excellence Movement. He's always supporting us. Um, the dealer of you want to oh dealer hope hope foundation dealer you can look us at, at dealer of dealer of hope on yep. facebook and um the dealer of hope on youtube as well yes so um we wanted to make sure that we gave some references to um some uh, the seven dimensions of wellness yeah i just threw it out there too for everybody okay if you guys look in the news feed so, it will be available um 
I'll throw it out on our Facebook page later, but I, in the in the feed, as in the chat, you guys can see there where I've added the seven dimensions of wellness. I'll rattle them off really fast. They're physical, emotional, intellectual, social, spiritual, environmental, and occupational. Again, there's a link there. Check them out. That link actually provides a little bit more detail as to uh, the definitions. It goes a little bit more deep into the in, to what physical uh, wellness is or, or what intellectual wellness is. So check that out. And if you want to spend time with us individually, we both coach. So Jatan is an amazing all kind of coach. You want to say this specifically? <laughs> um, I love everything that you do. So we'll just say I'm, I'm, I call myself a self discovery coach. There we I go. Also, too, we I, both I, are. I, I host workshops, I facilitate discussions, and I do some motivational speaking. Yes, mine specifically is around black girls, um, your historical black girl. Um, so if you are interested in, in workshops around also my book, Come Your Girl, Let Me Talk to You, I do those. And you can find me at nitareneesworld.com. Again, that's nitareneesworld.com. Um, you can book me off of there as well as uh, buy, purchase my book. Um, we are looking to do, we are here every other Sunday at three o'clock, but you can always come back to our um, Facebook page, Let's Unpack, or our, our YouTube. Let me look it up. Yeah. You can cheat and look up the Facebook page at Dealer, Dealer of Hope. Look at the wrong camera. At Dealer of Hope. <laughs> so that's YouTube and YouTube Facebook. YouTube and Facebook. All right. So we really want this to be interactive moving forward, too. So if at any time you have questions for us. Mr. Charles had said something. Yeah, he did say that, um, that we don't like to look at our finances because we don't want to. Yeah. We want to Absolutely. see this. We don't. Erica, you are so welcome. Um, I think that's pretty much it for this show. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you in a couple of weeks where we're going to unpack. And I'm not sure what we're going to unpack. We're going to unpack something. <laughs> Y'all tune in. See you soon.